<laughs> that's, a, that's a total waste of time. Absolutely. I wanted to ask you now, because this is the hot topic, especially in the Muslim community, about your conversion. Yeah. So tell us the story, like what happened exactly? Well, I think a lot of people who've been following me for a while understand that I've been mm. very respectful of Islam for a long time. Yeah, sure. I was born in a Christian country. I was raised as a Christian. And I've always been very respectful of Islam. And it's become more and more obvious to me and, and more and more pertinent that Islam is the last religion mm. on the planet. Mm. When I talk about Islam, because I'm new to it, yeah. I, I, I'm a little bit careful, right? Because I'm new to it. I'm certainly not a scholar. There's so much I need to learn. I know I'm on a learning journey. I'm not here to sit here and, and talk scripture. I, I don't know those things yet. I'm here to learn. Yeah. But and we're here at your assistance. Anyway, thank you, bro. Thank you. Honestly. Thank you. Yeah. But um, it's just for me, it feels like the last religion on earth. I feel like there's no other religion. People say to me, why did you convert? And I said, I don't really think, feel it as a conversion. I, it's almost like I knew God was real and now I've become religious. And they say, well, you were religious before. I was like, religious before how? Christian? Mm. What does Christian mean? Mm. Like, who's not a Christian? You go to Christian nations and everyone says they're a Christian. Look how they live their lives. Go yeah. into the average church. Is anyone actually fearful of God? Anybody? Mm -hmm. No. The girls are out on Saturday night drinking and then mm -hmm. they turn up to church because their parents made them. Mm -hmm. Like, there's, there's no substance to the religion. And also... Islam very closely reflects my personal beliefs. I, through my personal life, I've yeah. learned that if you don't have standards and you're not a strong person who's prepared to defend his ideas, you'll be crushed. Yes. And we look at most religions in the world today which are not prepared to defend their ideas. What's happened to them? They're just getting crushed. And yeah. now we have Christianity as an idea which has basically said, well, we can't set any firm rules because everyone will just quit. So instead, let's make it so easy to be a Christian that nobody has to put any effort in yeah. and then accept everybody no matter what. And hopefully we can keep the church doors open. <laughs> that's not that's not yeah, God yeah. to me. You know, yeah, yeah. God to me is is strong. God to me is something to be feared. Yeah. God to me is something someone that people are afraid to mock. Yeah. God to me is someone that you have to go out of your way to prove something to. God yeah. to me has red lines yeah. like God to me re represents the Islamic faith. The Christian God to me, I don't see God. I, I can't explain. I don't see anything there. So, yeah. to me, it was it was the only logical choice wow. in the end. Alhamdulillah, man. I mean, many as you're saying this, I'm sure many people are like ecstatic and extremely happy. It's a great, it's a great thing for everyone, honestly, because, you know, just anyone coming into Islam is, is you know, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us better than the world and everything in it. Yeah. But imagine now somebody of major influence. I mean, you're the most Googled person on the planet. I'm not yeah. sure if you still have yeah. any top spot I, th I think Putin might have beat me as of last week. But I think it's between me and Putin at the moment. <laughs> but I don't want to lose to Putin. Look, Putin's the big G. I don't want more enemies. Like it's, it's fine, Vladimir. You can have it. <laughs> I never thought I'd hear you saying that statement. Yeah. Putin beat me last year. Right? Yeah, <laughs> last yeah. Week. I think we're just certainly the most cool. <laughs> but no, no, it's, it's, it's definitely something beautiful. And uh, a lot of people have, uh, you know, you'd be surprised at how many women as well. Because like, obviously the, the accusations of misogyny and stuff, which, yeah. you know, but, but a lot of women, alhamdulillah, especially in the Muslim world, they're absolutely happy. In fact, let me tell you a story. Just before I came here today, one um, one particular woman, I can't remember her identity, but she's working as a school teacher yep. in London. And um, actually, my friend told me that she was uh, kicked out of school yep. because they had this campaign against you in the schools. I'm not sure if you're aware of this. I've seen, yeah, this was Are part of the cancellation. I did know about this. Yeah. yeah so in, in British schools, they, they said, you know, if you say anything good about if you if you say anything good about this person, or you have to be reported or prevent or anything, Clown and if you say anything, you, you know, you have to kind of combat his extremism or whatever it may be, right? So she, because when you became Muslim, she abstained from doing that. She said, I can't really do that because, yeah. you know, Islamic laws and it's, it's backbiting and he's got honor yeah. in Islam and so on. And unfortunately, they fired her from that, from the position. Wow. So you can see that this is the level of encroachment we're talking about here. So, uh, and this shows you that the level of fraternity that exists and not only the fact that, you know, when you're looking at Twitter or whatever, Twitter or whatever, social media, it's not a representation of what's really happening. On of the course, ground. of course. And I, I mean, that's that's crazy to hear. And what's most crazy is, yeah, the, the fervor behind this idea that I'm somehow extremist is truly it's truly clown world. Like I've sat as a professional and, and analyzed my content and understood which things can be taken out of context and which things were said in a way perhaps they wouldn't, shouldn't have been said before I was massively famous. But yeah. we have to sit here and understand that if you take anybody on the planet and give them seven years of YouTube and yeah. then they decide and they blow up big, you're going to be able to find 30 to 45 seconds of clip across all those years that can be taken out of context, right? Yeah. And, 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 and it's truly crazy because they sit and say, oh yeah, but you know, the young boys are watching your stuff and... They, they don't truly understand all of it, and it, there's nuance that's missing. 
And, and my argument is very simple. My argument is, well, one, you're taking small clips out of context. And two, there's not a single piece of content on the internet that a 14-year-old boy can't misunderstand. Name yeah. somebody, name someone who's producing content on the internet that you would be 100% I mean, happy now, now for a 14-year-old to... Drill artists and so they say that. I mean, I live in an area that's... I'm not going to mention the names of the, the artists, but they're talking about going, going to this person's house and killing him. And killing him in the middle of a knife crime epidemic. Yeah. We have little Nas twerking on having sex with the devil in his music videos. Really? Like, we're going to sit here and talk about <laughs> how children can be Im impressionable young children, and I'm sitting there saying there's no way I'm the worst person on the internet. No, that's not why they deleted a, me. The difference for them is, as you've mentioned... On those on those fronts, it doesn't matter to them because it's like okay, they they're consuming our hedonistic product or whatever it is that doesn't change their worldview. Whereas what you're saying is ideological now. You're ch you're challenging the status quo of the LW of the liberal world order. You're challenging second wave feministic notions. You are challenging some liberal notions. You are challenging ideas, commonplace ideas of of tolerance. And uh, George Orwell said it very well. He said that the more a society moves away from the truth the more it hates people who speak it. Absolutely, and, and, you're, and you're right. And I think even the basic things I teach, because some people have said to me, Andrew, all you teach about is personal responsibility, motivation, working hard, getting up and doing the right thing. I said, that's the absolute, those are the things they're most afraid of. Hmm. If you teach people to have standards for themselves and to be morally strong people and to know right from wrong, then they can't brainwash you. Yeah. So that's what they're most afraid of. They're most afraid of young men waking up and going, no, I don't believe that. You have to believe it. No, I don't believe it. I don't want to. And I want to go do this. I want to go to the gym and be strong, or I want to believe X, or I want to be a moral person. They genuinely have a problem with baseline morality. Yes, yes. Understand, when uh, some people recognize when I convert to Islam that there was a time I was an atheist. There was a time when I was atheistic. Mm. And the reason I am now so absolutely certain that God is real is because yeah. I've seen evil. I've seen shaitan. I've seen it. When you see enough evil, you realize that there must be an equal and opposite force. And there are people out there in the world today doing the work of the devil, genuine demons, who are trying to destroy the baseline morality that's inside of all of us. We're all born with some kind of morality, and they're trying to destroy it. And that's exactly the Islamic understanding, that, that we believe that you're born with something called fitrah, which is the initial goodness. You're, you're, you're born with an innate belief, receptivity to believe in one God. Yeah. And then that is corrupted. In fact, there's a prophet, uh, hadith of the prophet, where he says, "Kullu mauludin yuladu al fitra." Every born child is born upon this initial goodness. And then his father and mother, or his parents, they socialize him into, you know, Christianity, Judaism, yeah. Magiism. So the idea is that everyone is born with this initial. Uh, goodness and this initial uh, will or want to believe in God, one yeah. God, and then as you mentioned, I mean, it's, it's what you're mentioning here is really is profound because you're you're, you're mentioning a, a central doctrine in Islam. But but it's and 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 this is why perhaps I f I found God the way I did because mm. I understood all these things mm. first and then I saw the Quran and it confirmed so many things for me. You know, mm. like I've the, even the conversations I've been having so far, so many things have been confirmed and it's amazing the knowledge that's inside of it, which is so applicable today. Yeah. yeah. For 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 an old book, right? You know, it's supposed to be old, but it seems yeah. so so timeless. But it's truly amazing. But you're, you're totally right. And, and the baseline morality, I don't think most people understand that when they're doing this under the guise of tolerance, when they're saying be so tolerant that you no longer believe in right from wrong, they're not doing that to make society a better place. They're doing that to empty your brain so that you have no resistance to the slave mind programming. They want to yeah. get you to a point where if they tell you the sky is green, yeah. you look at with your own eyes yeah, and yeah. you see blue, but no, the sky is green. That's what they want. So that you have to have nothing in your brain that can prevent that. If you have God, if you have no, I believe this is right point. and wrong. Yeah, if yeah. you have personal responsibility, if you have self-accountability, mm -hmm. if you're a person who sticks up for what he believes, all that's bad to them. They want all of that gone yeah. so they can tell you the sky is green. Mm -hmm. And and I don't want to say too much because I don't want the stream to end, but they're going to tell you something much worse than the sky is green. They're going to tell you something else. And and it's they're trying to program us all into slaves. And it's I, scary. I remember when I was in my undergraduate days and I was uh, reading a particular book by this guy called Jeremy Bentham who became like, you know, the spiritual forefather of J.S. Mill, who is the father of like social liberalism of today. And I remember reading this because it was so powerful because it linked to something I read in the Quran. He said that, you know, you have two gods. He said, you have the God of pain and you have the God of pleasure. And I thought, this is so interesting. The Quran states, you know, have you seen the one who takes his own desires as a God? Yep. And because now there is no transcendental force that we can look up and, and as you say venerate now we're forced to be slaves to the system yep. 
we're to our own desires or i mean the quran has another verse which i think is so powerful and it connects very well with what you're saying it says god darab allahu mathalan rajulan that god has struck a parable of a man fihi shuraka mutashakisuna that he's got many different slave owners wa rajul salaman li rajulin and another kind of man who's only got one slave owner he's god is basically telling us in the quran that you've got w- one example of one individual who's got multiple slave owners and another one with just one, he says, Are they the same? So here, the idea is, as Rousseau said, he's a liberal philosopher, he said that man is born free, but everywhere in chains. This is the order, because if you don't have that God to, to worship, then you're going to end up having to worship to everything else. And the whole part of the shahada which you took, which is, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an Muhammad rasulullah, the, 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 the true meaning of that, la ilaha illallah, is that there is no God worthy of worship except for one God, yep. which means that your, des- your desires or the system or these people that want to control us, they are, th- the problem is they're not worthy of worship. The only one worthy of our sub- subordination and submission is the creator of the heavens and the earth. There's no one else. I agree. And it's, 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 I, I completely agree. And I've agreed with this for the longest time. You know, I've never been to like a music concert mm. and people ask me why. And I said, I just look at it and I feel embarrassed. I look at someone up on a stage <laughs> dancing around and I look at hundreds of thousands of peasants in the crowd <laughs> just yeah 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 I'm like uh, it's embar- I, I'm I feel cringe it's like secondhand embarrassment when I see these festivals and everyone's losing their mind or these music concerts I genuinely feel embarrassed for the people who go because to me that is a form of worship like yeah. you can listen to the music at home for free you like you don't have to wait in that line and stand out in the cold like I I don't know perhaps it was a bit extreme but I've always known that they're trying to give us false idols to some degree. And when I speak to atheists, atheists, they go, oh, I don't believe in God. But they, they've they signed up so hard to the liberal woke agenda. They're as religious as anybody, but they're just believing in the wrong things. They're believing in degeneracy and they're believing in the work of the devil. So humans always need something to believe in. And it's a great thing you said about your own desires. It's like one, one guy I was talking to since my conversion says, it's interesting that somebody with everything, all the Western world, yeah, everything, yeah. everything somebody w- could want exactly. has now converted. And I said, yeah, because even before my conversion, I understood that hedonism is a black hole mm. and you can never fill it. Mm-hmm. You're never going to be able to have enough girls to be happy with girls. You're never going to be able to have enough money to be happy with money. You're never yeah, going to yeah. be, be able to you know, drink enough to be happy with drinking. Like It's a black hole and you can pour endless things down it, but you'll never fill it up. And you need to have some degree of self-restraint. And I've always been a very disciplined person. I've never made mistakes. But certainly, yeah, the higher power is, is, is going to give you more satisfaction in your heart than endless, I, endless insanity. Absolutely, because I did see a clip of you um, ma- making the same points. You were saying that you know I've done all of these things. Because the accusation is, well, you are the poster child of hedonism, right? Say this guy, what this, you're talking about. Which, hedonism. which, before, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah. But th- what's annoying about that is I'm absolutely not. That's yeah. what's that's what's so annoying about that yeah, because yeah. I know so many people of my net worth. I will sit here and say, on the podcast before everybody and, and before God, voila, voila. <laughs> yeah. Never, never slept with a prostitute or paid for sex in my life. I don't gamble. I've never taken a drug in my life, never tried steroids, never tried weed, never tried cocaine ever in my life, that, yeah. ever. <laughs> never, never, never. Yeah. Like, I drank a bit of alcohol, okay. smoked some shisha, smoked some cigars, and spent most of my life as an athlete, yeah. working hard 12, 14-hour days making money. But I look like, after my family. But, so for me to be, but yeah, it, yeah. they go, you're the poster boy of hedonism. I say, yeah. I know so many people who do so much worse than yeah, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I really don't do that much. But I'm Andrew, not gambling. Andrew, from our perspective, if you've done all of that, your, your, your slate is clean. Which is, which is amazing. But it's just, in, it's just incredible to me that, especially at my level of net worth, right? I, I, I grew up in Luton, poor on a council estate, yeah, and, yeah. That, and now I'm pretty financially successful. And once yeah. you get past this, this line and you meet these other people who are, who are, as, who are as rich as I am, yeah. yeah, they go, they get a boat, they put 100 girls on it who are paid for, you know, a big pile of cocaine. That I, I don't do any of them things. Like mm-hmm. I, I would, I'd stand by and say I'm one of the ni- – for a man with a bunch of money from a council estate, I'm, I'm as pretty behaved as you can possibly hope yeah. for. So 